and girls, welcome to Sunday School. Last week, you probably remember that we were still in the book of 1 Peter. We talked about Simon Peter and how he wrote that letter to encourage Christians that were going through hard times. And we were reminded in reading that, that we can trust God even when we are going through hard times. Um, today, we are moving to a new book of the Bible, same author, same type of book. Remember, we moved from Genesis, which was the law, to 1 Peter, which was a letter, and now we're staying in letters and we're moving into the book of 2 Peter. So as I said just a minute ago, remember 1 Peter was a book primarily encouraging Christians that were going through a hard time, right? 2 Peter has a little bit of a different message. It's still a letter, but in 2 Peter, we, are rem we will be reminded that Jesus will return one day and we should live like the Bible teaches us until he returns again. So I want you to be listening as we're talking about this book and thinking, what are some of the ways that the Bible asks us to live as we wait for Jesus's return? So just like I do every week to kind of get us warmed up, I'm gonna show you a picture really quick. Now this picture is a picture of a Roman inkwell. And some of you might already have guesses as to how this was used, but before we have the before people had the pens that we use today, like a ballpoint pen that has the ink inside of it, people had to dip what they were writing with into a container of ink. So this was an inkwell that would hold ink that people used to write on paper. So it's likely that when Peter was writing the book of 2 Peter and 1 Peter, he would have been using an inkwell to help him write the letter. So that's just a quick reminder to kind of give you the context. Remember, we're not talking about something that was written yesterday or even five years ago. We're talking about something that was written in ancient Roman times. So you can imagine as we're reading this letter, Peter with his inkwell writing the letter to the churches that he was talking to. So we're going to head into a time of worship now, and then we'll jump right back in for our passage.
trust in you, Jesus. You're all, you're all, you're all that we need. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. To lead us, we're on the right track oh, 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 oh. Wide open spaces for wide open eyes We're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. about last week when we we're talking about locating references in the Bible. Remember that this is a reference. This is like kind of your map to get to where you need to be um, to look for a passage of scripture. So today our key verse is going to come from 2 Peter. Remember this is the book that we're looking at. The first number that you see is the chapter. So we're in chapter one. And our key verse, just one verse this week. Remember last week we looked at a couple verses. So I had like a little dash to show you all the verses you were looking at. This week it's just one. Second Peter chapter one, verse five. So remember, this translates into your Bible. You can come into your table of contents at the very beginning. And I can find the book of Second Peter in my table of contents. And I'm going to look, it's on page 1018 in this Bible. So I'm going to flip there. Um, as I'm going, I'm going to remember that I am in chapter one. So I'm going to find the big heading, second Peter. Chapter one is the big number that I see at kind of throughout the, the passages. And then the small numbers that are throughout the book are the verses. So right there. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5. And that's how I use the reference to find where we are this morning. All right, we're going to head to our Bible reading and then we'll reconvene for our lesson. Today's Bible reading comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, 
they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right, as usual, I'm going to kind of retell the passage to you um, in my own words. And so you can listen and look at our picture for the week as I do that. And then we'll talk a little bit about what it means for us. The apostle Simon Peter wrote a second letter to those who followed Christ. Peter had witnessed the miracles and teachings of Jesus. He saw Jesus' death on the cross, and he saw Jesus after he rose from the grave. Peter was getting old, and he wanted to encourage the church to remember some important truths. Peter wrote, God has given you everything you need to grow in your faith, in your knowledge of Jesus. Add these things to your faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, endurance, godliness, brotherly affection, and love. These things will keep you from being unfruitful or useless. Next, Peter reminded his readers of his time with Jesus. We were witnesses to the greatness of Jesus. We told you of the power of Jesus. Peter had witnessed Jesus' baptism and the transfiguration of Jesus on the mountain. Peter had heard God's voice from heaven say Jesus was God's son. Wow. Peter also wrote to the people about God's word. Pay attention to God's word. It is a lamp shining in a dark place until Jesus returns. No promise from scripture was from a prophet's own ideas. Promises from God do not come from men. Instead, men spoke God's word just as the Holy Spirit told them to. Okay, so a couple things I want to point out to you in the passage that was read to you and then kind of in what I just summarized for you. And the first is there are two words that you probably have heard or at least um, yeah, at least I've heard, maybe not know the definition of, but they are self-control and endurance. So I want to talk really quickly about what those mean. So self-control is being able to control your words and actions, especially when you want to react in a bad way. So let's say your little brother or sister, or your mom or dad or cousin or whoever you're kind of close contact with at home does something that really bothers you. And you know that the right thing to do is to maybe ignore it or to not get angry or to not snap back. Um, Sometimes we do a good job of controlling our emotions, right? That's called self-control. So if your little brother or sister snatches something away from you that you were in the middle of using, your first impulse might be to yell or to push or to snatch it right back. Having self-control means that you can kind of take a deep breath, you can get control of your feelings, and you can react in a way that's more positive, right? So that's one thing, self-control. And Peter tells the church that he's writing to that they need to have self-control, right? The other thing, the other word that I wanted to point out to you from the passage this morning is endurance. He tells them that they will need endurance. And endurance we often talk about when it comes to like sports or races or running. Um, and it's the like ability to keep going even when you're tired, even when you want to give up. So if you can kind of push through feeling really exhausted or feeling like, oh, this isn't what I want to be doing anymore. And you can push through that and keep going on a task no matter what. That is called endurance. And so Peter told the people um, that he was writing to that once they became believers, they needed to develop goodness in their lives. And two of the things that he specifically mentions are self-control and endurance. And he said to have endurance is to have godliness, which means like living in a way that pleases God by making right choices. And he told them if they have goodness, if they have knowledge, if they have self-control and endurance, they will be able to share with others what Jesus has done for them. So God will be able to use them if they're developing these good habits in their life, this fruit in their life, God will be able to use them to share the good news of others. Um, or the good news of Jesus, excuse me, with others. Um, the other important thing in this passage that I wanted to point out to you is that Peter also taught the church that God's promises do not come from man. So even though he was writing to them about God's promises, Peter did not make up the promises himself, right? He wasn't just like sitting in his room thinking, oh, like I need to write this letter. What should I write? Oh, maybe I'll tell him like God wants him to be good. God wants them to have self-control, right? That's not what Peter was doing. He didn't come up with the ideas that he was writing to them in the letter. The Holy Spirit told him what to write. So when you come to believe and have a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit 
lives within you and it can remind you of how to live for God. For the writers of the Bible, the Holy Spirit lived within them. And since they were believers, it told them what God wanted them to write down for us to know. So we talk about how the Bible is God's living word or God's inspired word. Or it's God breathed. So the Holy Spirit gave the writers of the different books of the Bible God's words to write for us. Even though God did not physically hold that pen and dip it in the inkwell, he gave the words to the people who wrote the books of the Bible. And um, this is a really important truth to take away, right? As we're thinking through like, well, why should I try to have self-control? Like when my sister steals something away from me, why shouldn't I just snatch it right back? Why shouldn't I yell at her? Why do I need to care about these traits? But the Holy Spirit told the writers of the Bible what to write. So it's not just words coming from the Apostle Paul or Peter or Mark, right? These words are coming straight from the Holy Spirit and telling us how to live. It's cool to know that every word in the Bible was known by God before it was written down by men. And that should help inspire us to want to live the way that the Bible tells us. So remember, in this chapter, we are reminded that God inspired all the words that we read in the Bible and that he asks us to pursue goodness while we are waiting with endurance for his return. All right, now I'm gonna hand it off to Joel for our Explore the Bible segment. Hey, welcome to the beach. Today we're talking about the Apostle Peter. Did you know he started out as a fisherman? That's why I have this net. And that's why I'm next to the ocean, because I wanna go fishing too. But before I do, turn in your Bibles to the book of 2 Peter and get ready to discover that the Holy Spirit told the writers of the Bible what to write. I'm Joel, this is Explore the Bible on location, and I hope I catch a saw-toothed baby tiger shark. They can be anywhere from six inches to 475,000 feet long. Here, fishy, fishy. Here, fishy, fishy. Well, <laughs> no fish yet. I wonder if I'm using the wrong kind of net. I'll be right back. Ah, here we go. This is more the kind of net that Peter would have used back in the day. Observe. Well, still caught nothing because I'm a horrible fisherman. <laughs> I could learn a thing or two from Peter, but uh, maybe I'm just not cut out for fishing. But I do know some people who are doing some amazing things with fishing nets, and I want you guys to meet them. Come with me. We already know that Peter was a fisherman and a follower of Jesus. But did you also know that Peter wrote some books in the Bible? Scripture was written by men inspired by the Holy Spirit. This means that God's Holy Spirit told the writers of the Bible what to write. God told Peter what to write in the epistles, and Peter obeyed. And because of this, we have the books of 1st and 2nd Peter in our Bibles today. Whoa, this place is so cool. We are here at Burbank Trawl Makers. They have been making fishing nets for a really, really long time. And we're gonna go inside and take a look. Come on. All right, everybody, we are here with Billy Burbank the third. Thanks for letting us visit today. You're welcome, sir. Say hello to my friends. Hello, friends, how y'all doing? So we were trying to fish earlier today on the beach. I had a net and I was in the water and I'm trying to catch fish and I I failed but you guys I heard are really good with making 
fishing nets and can you tell us a little bit about the history of your family and how you got into this business? Goes uh, 105 years back. My grandfather was born on Cumberland Island, just an island in Georgia, just north of here. He was a fisherman. He uh, cast nets in the water for bluefish, uh, had seines, what have you. He bought a shrimp boat and started shrimping. He made his own nets and his nets fished so well that everybody else said, Captain Bill, you have to make me a net. So Captain Bill got so busy making nets that he sold his shrimp boat and so he became a net maker. That's so awesome. You're talking about all these different types of nets that can catch shrimp and different types of fish. Do you think maybe you could show us some of those nets? Absolutely. We'll go here to the net shop and I'll show you how we start and fabricate nets from patterns that we designed and hand sew them together. Yes. This is where we uh, make shrimp trawls for really all over the world. Wow. Yeah, you said, okay, so trawling. Trawl. Yeah, trawl, trawl is a net. Okay. And, and the name trawl came from back in the day from the Asian and European areas they, that was introduced in the United States was the otter trawl. This is what makes it different from the Jesus days of seines and cast nets. These are nets that are trawled through the water, towed with power. And back in the day, they were sailboats that pulled them, there were rowboats that pulled them, and then there were powered boats. And, and this net is spread by two wooden apparatuses, which is like uh, uh, an airplane wing effect. It's a heavy door, angled, 35 degrees of angle, which is heavy, which takes the net to the bottom, spreads the net open as the boat tows. It opens the net up. Okay. And so now, as it's moving through the water, the shrimp and fish, whatever we're trying to catch, will filter into the net and into the bag. Gotcha, okay, so trawling has to do with pulling it through the water. That's correct. All right, excellent. Well, can you show us a little bit about how you sew these together? Yes. Okay, you said something about sea turtles not getting caught in nets. What, what do you mean by that? Like. This is, a sea turtle could get caught in this. How, how do you yeah. keep those sweet sea turtles from hanging out with the shrimp? Well, we have been working with uh, NOAA, National Marine Fisheries Service, because there was always an incidental catch of a sea turtle. So we've designed one that has come up to be 100% effective. And it has really increased the catch because it gets rid of so much more. The nets don't load up as quick with mm. unwanted catch. So the fishermen can feel very, very good about doing something to save the lives of our animals that God's put in our hands. Can you show us that? Yes, sure yeah, can. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <gasps> Surprise! <Yeah. laughs> it yeah. works! Yeah. God has a plan for everyone's life. He had a plan for Peter's life too. Peter was a good fisherman, which was great. Jesus called Peter to leave that job and become a leader in the church and an author of scripture. Peter lived a life of obedience to God's word and God's spirit. Did you know that God has a plan for your life and wants to lead and empower you by his Holy Spirit too? Maybe you'll serve God by being a fisherman or a teacher or a mom, or dad, or a pastor, or a missionary, or a businessman or woman. No matter what, God wants to use the Bible His Holy Spirit inspired to lead and guide you and me into His amazing plans, just like He did for Peter. Oh, this would be perfect. Hey, how awesome is it that Billy is carrying on the tradition of making nets that his grandfather started 105 years ago? So awesome. Hey, no matter what God calls you to do, you can be confident that God's Word, inspired by His Holy Spirit, is the guide you need. 
And that's what we discover when we dig into the book of 2 Peter. I'm Joel, this is Explore the Bible on Location, and with this net, I could catch more sawtooth baby tiger sharks than a boy could ever dream of. I just gotta get it to the beach. Let me see if I can drag it. Hey Billy, can you kind of help me drag this thing up? Billy, this thing's very heavy, Billy. Hi friends, for today's activity, we are going to write our Bible verse for today on a piece of paper. And the Bible says, pay attention to what the Bible says. And it comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. So you're going to write it on a piece of paper. It could be a white paper, it could be cardstock, whatever kind of paper you want. And then you're going to ask an adult in your house to cut up the paper. So I cut it up with my scissors and I cut all the paper. And then, uh-oh, I dropped one. What your job is, is to puzzle it back together. So it's going to be a homemade puzzle using your verse. If you need help writing the verse on the piece of paper, you can ask an adult to do it, and then you can decorate your paper however you want. But then when they finish cutting it, you are going to piece it together. See, I got one piece, and that's your activity. I hope you have so much fun puzzling the verse.